Did you guys attack my door again? Who of you scratched or attacked my door? Because this wasn't that way. What, was it you? Did you scratch my door? Or was it you? Did you scratch my door? No. Electronics. Aha! Yes! That's exactly what I need. Yep. I guess this paint will do the job and help me reducing the attack surface of my door. Right? Attack surface reduction paint. That's what it meant for, right? Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and if my intro wasn't clear, this episode is all about attack surface reduction rules. So attack surface reduction rules or in short ASR rules are I think 16 rules that are baked in within your operating system. Well, not in every operating system. They are available in Windows Enterprise, Windows Pro for, 11, for Windows 10 and 11 and also available in every server operating system. So that's 2012 until 2022. And what it does, it basically protects your operating system against what I would call it methods or techniques that could be the result of a vulnerability. Let me give you an example. So a real life example we had was in 2022, we had Folina. And in short, Folina was a vulnerability in Office applications that allowed um, malicious code to be ran from within the context of Office. And Microsoft announced it as a zero day. Um, and they announced three methods to tackle this issue. Um, the first one was technical remediations, that's how I call it, like editing registry keys, ensuring that small features that depended on the zero day were disabled and you had to write custom scripts to push it through all your, through all your devices because it was a certain registry key that needs to be disabled. Um, but that registry key also came with some consequences in, in, in sort of functionality. Um, the other option was, well, basically wait for the update to come. And Microsoft still had to work for the update. And another recommendation they had was enable the ASR rule, which is called, I have to look it up, um, <clears throat> is block Office applications from creating child processes. Because it's just a fundamental part. An attacker will abuse your Office application and they will try to spawn another process coming from the Office application. If you block it there, well, they may try to run everything, but they cannot spawn anything else. They cannot go outside of the Office application itself, which was a great way to block this zero day. So now that I have told you about these 16 amazing attack surface reduction rules that exist that could potentially block an incoming zero day vulnerability, I want to get rid of one misconception. I sometimes hear that people say, well, for ASR rules, you need Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And that's not true. The, we the reason why it's confusing is Microsoft Defender for Endpoint makes it very easy to analyze ASR rules because they will provide the logging on the device, get those logs and provide them somewhere centrally. Um, they will provide it in security.microsoft.com in advanced hunting or in the reporting tab there. Um, what is the challenge when you do not have MDE and have another EDR or and, uh, and AV um, solution? Um, you will have to find a way to get the um, event view logs um, from your all of your devices, fetch them and upload them or forward them to somewhere centrally where you can analyze them and figure out which, which of the rules will be blocking for your environment. And getting those logs somewhere centrally might be something challenging. So I have two ways I like to enable ASR rules. Um, one method is via GPO. So you make 
a GPO going to administrative templates, Windows components, Microsoft Defender Antivirus, Microsoft Defender Exploit Guard, Attack Surface Reduction. Double click there and you will create a grid where you enter each ESR rule based on its GUID. You can find the GUIDs on the Microsoft documentation, which I will link in the description. But it's very important that next to each GUID, you enter the value of two. Um, what is the value of two? Value two means that the rule will be in audit mode. There are also different values. You have zero, which means disable, one means block, um, and six means warn mode. Now, very important to note for warn mode, um, this will give a small pop-up and allow your end users to bypass um, the block. But this only works when MDAV is um, the primary antivirus solution on your device. If you have any other solution like uh, Trend Micro, ESET, and many others as an installed antivirus, MDAV will be in passive mode and will not be able to propose the bypass. So it requires MDAV to be in active mode or in other words, in real-time protection. So one of the easiest ways to push ASR to all of your endpoints is using Intune. So you go to endpoint.microsoft.com, endpoint security, attack surface reduction, create a policy, select Windows 10, Windows 11, and Windows Server, um, attack surface reduc reduction rules, give it a name, it's just for demonstration purposes, and here you can see all of your ASR rules and configuration possibilities. You can also select here all of the same values that we had in the GPO. And what is cool about Intune is that they really make it easy to also mark your exclusions. Um, now the fun fact is these ASR only per rule exclusions are rather new. Well, they are one year old, I guess, this feature. And it allows you to have an exclusion for each rule. So let's say I have some Adobe exotic software that Adobe does need to interact with, I can exclude this software, but that exclusion will not count for all of my other ASR rules. Um, I guess two years ago, um, ASR rule exclusions were globally, meaning that all of the ASR rules were looking at the same exclusion, making it sometimes not that beneficial to enable a certain ASR rule because it invoked too many exceptions globally for all of your devices. Four to six weeks later. So now that we have enabled the necessary logging via GPO or via Intune, we can do the necessary analysis. So after 30 days, you can analyze your logs in two ways. You can go to the security.microsoft.com portal, go to reports, go to attack surface reduction rules, and analyze your ESR hits here. Um, this is not my preferred way. I preferred to do it via advanced hunting. So you go to hunting, advanced hunting. So a query looks like this. So you want to see the device events where the action type contains, well, the log that matches with your ESR rule. And how can I find these value, the values that I need? Well, I can just basically look in the documentation. So let's say we are looking at um, LSASS block events done by um, ASR rule. Um, I want to see how many there were audited. Um, you can pick this value, so the advanced hunting action type. Um, copy it, paste it right here, and let's see how many results I had in the last seven days. So in the last seven days, I actually had, well, more than 10,000 hits um, on my devices. Now, Microsoft also has some categories. They have um, two types. They have the standard protection rules. And those are the rules they say, well, those are the minimum set of rules that they um, really recommend to enable. And they say also that they have a really minimal or to no impact on the end user. And these are um, verbal sign drivers, credential stealing, so this is the LSASS one, and um, block persistence through WMI event subscription. All of the others, well, they are marked as other rule, and those require some investigation according to Microsoft. 
And now we're coming to the part where the community comes to help. Um, here are some really good guys. And um, I want to explain my example even more is, um, you know that I queried here for the LSASS um, ASR rule. And you notice that I had 10,000 EV items or 10,000 hits in seven days. Um, I was always scratching my head like, wait, this has way too many logs. This will invoke blocks. This will, this will have impact on my end users. So what did I do a couple of days ago? I released a question, an open question on Twitter to ask people what their experience is with the LSASS ASR rule. And boy, did they deliver. This is content that even ChatGPT could not match. I received a lot of useful responses and I even found some little hidden gems within the comments or, or tweets that I really want to share with you. One of them is this blog post of Palantir. Um, I really have to thank Zero Wi-Fi for submitting this one. Um, Palantir has documented a lot of information on how he tackles ASR rules deployment. And he even made categories. He made categories of ASR rules that he considers safe for most environments, ASR rules that require some investigation because they might be very specific for your environment, and ASR rules that you have to be very careful with. Um, he has documented all of his steps, um, his exceptions, how he found them, very useful information and to learn from on how he tackled it. And maybe you can find techniques, um, the same thinking methods for your deployment. So thank you very much, uh, Palantir and Zero Wi-Fi for sharing this source. Another great response is from um, Martin Schmidley. Sorry if I butcher your name, Martin. Um, where he says, well, I'm quite confident in deploying the ASR rule of LSASS. I had little to no impact. And Adam Cook, he jumps in and he says, well, yeah, I had the experience of, of having some small impact about it. Um, and basically they both come to the consent like, yeah, there might be impact, but it doesn't look that big. As, as in the logs, like, like I just showed you, we had those 10,000 logs. Um, but what I learned from this is that with a good validation group, a good testing group, and, and committing to waves where you have a rep representative test group and you go from a small group to a larger group, you can figure your way out and fine tune your ASR rules to get them pushed out to your complete environment. One more last thing that I really want to share with you guys is um, the ASR rule um, block process creation originating from PSXEC and WMI commands. If you have um, an SCCM or Microsoft Endpoint configuration manager in your environment and you're using it to configure your endpoints, do not use it because SCCM actually relies on the WMI commands to configure its clients. So if you would enable this, you would practically break your SCCM configuration. So this basically concludes my short episode about attack surface reduction rules. Um, I hope I could convince you to start with ASR or, or commit to push that final rule um, to your endpoints. Um, and for this episode to end with it, I really want to thank the people who responded to my open question. Um, for me personally, there was a lot of added value in those comments. I've learned a lot based on the blogs, the personal experiences people shared. And I truly, truly want to thank them. And I hope if you look at the thread, I'll link it as well in the comment in the description. Um, it's valuable information that I do not want you guys to miss on. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, remarks, please let me know. See you next time.